Flux One developer models are released, and now we have the control net for Candy, Soft Edge, and Depth Map. This is the latest version. Version 3 from XLab. Let's check it out. Version 3 control net models from XLab AI. Hello everyone, XLab AI has recently launched XFlex Comfy UI custom nodes. These are their own custom nodes that are able to connect the control net they create and also the LoRa model they create by connecting these custom nodes to the Flux models. This weekend, they just dropped the version 3 control net models for Candy for the Soft Edge, and here we've got the Depth Map control net version 3 as well. Right here, we have the custom nodes installation steps. Now, I've found an easier way to install them, which is using the Comfy UI Manager. You can copy this name and go to Comfy UI. Right here, we have the Comfy UI Manager and go to Custom Nodes Manager. You can search this name, Xflux Comfy UI. After that, these custom nodes will appear. And again, simply click Install and restart your Comfy UI. Normal procedure. Then that's going to be okay. It's going to be able to run this. Now let's check out version 3. Since the Flux model's development progress in the AI community is going so fast recently, if you have version 2 or version 1 like me that I have right here, I don't think you'll need that for these videos. We're going to download the version 3 models from this link, and I'll provide these three links in the video description below. As you can see, they have examples of workflows for these control net models, and all three are available to download. The workflows of the basic workflow are available to test run with the control net as well. It's not too complicated, but it is different from what we used to have in Stable Diffusion. Once you go here, you can click on the files versions, download this Flux Dev Control Net version 3, save tensor files, and these will be your control net model files. Where we're going to save that, we'll be going to our locations of models. The Xlabs folder will appear once you install the custom nodes and you'll have three folders that are created by the system, which are the control net, flux, and LoRa. For this video, we're testing the control net, so we're going to save the version 3 models just like what I did for version 2. Save that control net model into this folder path. Then that will be good to go. So let's download this and we'll get started in Comfy UI. Okay, so we have the three files, control net files downloaded version 3, and I just moved away those older control net versions. So again, put that in the model XLab control net folder and let's go back to Comfy UI and check that out. Right here we have Comfy UI and we can start with a new blank screen. We have the control net workflow that's right in your custom nodes. Go to the workflow subfolder and right here we have all the different kinds of control net workflow examples. We're going to play around with these three version 3 control net workflows that were uploaded 17 hours ago. So that means this version 3 control net was launched less than a day ago. So it's a pretty new control net and we're going to test that out. Some people ask me how they can load a workflow. Actually, this is very easy, basic stuff. I think lots of people will know how to load a workflow in their comfy UI. Anyway, you're going to hold a file and drag and drop it into this comfy UI screen and you're going to see that JSON file transform into our workflow interface like that. First of all, we can take a look at this. We've got the Candy Edge, which is going to be the typical control net preprocessor. We have the dual clip loader. We're using the Clip L and T5 XXL FP16. Now I have the FP8 as well, so I'm going to try with the FP8. That's going to require lower VRAM so I can record this video in the meantime without lagging and stuff like that. Going to the load flux control net loader. This is like the typical control net loader that we have. But in this case, we're loading only the flux models that we just downloaded, version 3. So there, we have the Candy Edge control net version 3. Pass that data to our applied flux control net custom nodes that are coming from the XLab Comfy UI custom nodes package. Then we've got the clip text encode flux nodes. That's a new one in Comfy UI. Latest versions are dedicated to working for flux models. So we need that as well. And here's something pretty funny that I just noticed. As we all know, the flux models don't need a negative prompt. But in the new control net flux workflow here, I see this negative prompt. They have predefined text in here. 
So, let's see if this is workable for the negative conditions. That's basically the process of this. I don't know why they save this candy edge in the save image. Maybe they're just doing it for demo purposes, but I don't think most people will need that. So take it off, and we have only the negative conditions connected here. Then, as you can see, the XLab sampler, this is different from the custom sampler we had in the beginning when the Flux model launched. So this is also coming from the Comfy UI X Flux custom nodes. For the load diffusion model, that's the same one that we used to have loading the diffusion models. I have the developer versions FP8, and I'm going to try this one, see if it works. If it doesn't work, then I'll switch to FP16 versions. We're also using the Flux VAE models that are coming from the Black Foreign Lab. As mentioned in the repo of the control net on Hugging Face page, it's using the Flux 1 dev model by Black Foreign Lab. They're using the original architecture of the Flux dev one. So the VA is also, you know, without modifying anything, just using the same one as what I have downloaded. And here I like to change the save model to save image to a preview image just for demo purposes. Their example is showing a dining room for switching colors and styles to other styles. From what I see in the candy edge, this is the example that they're using, using a dining room and changing it to cyberpunk styles, outer space, map mask styles, etc. We can try something like that with a similar image that I have built. I have generated before. So uh, let's use this one. I have generated an image before. I think it's in mid journey. And yeah, we can use something like that and try to replicate similar things. So in here, we're going to use a cyberpunk living room. Again, I won't make many changes for everything overall in here. Just want to show what is by default in the workflow examples from their custom nodes package. So I'm using this candy version three workflow JSON files in here. So let's click the Q prompt and see what we have. First, we got the candy edge loaded for our living room image. Then it starts loading up the diffusion model. Then the clip, the dual clip loader we have, starting in the text encode text prompt, and wait for a moment, and we will have the image. Hopefully, that will work. Okay. So we have the image created, and right here, let's take a look at this cyberpunk style living room. And we got this put out side by side with the original image. There you have our original image for a living room, and we got the cyberpunk style. So far, everything's pretty close. It's like uh, we have the couch and we have the coffee table in the front, and then a curved TV-like monitor style TV in here. Um, and the hanging light appears on the left of my screen. So that is, yeah, something that looks pretty nice. It has changed the line here from the candy edge. And it has changed the styles of this line to the cyberpunk styles. Neon light. It changed up the patterns of the floor. And uh, as you can see right here is another pattern. And then we have another futuristic style pattern appear on the floor. Also, everything behind the window is going to change. And that looks well, okay, pretty cool for the first generation using the control net and the first gen loading up all the model stuff. Of course, obviously, it takes a little bit longer time for the first time. Initialize the models and clip loader everything the first time. But it's an acceptable image that's following the Candy Edge control net in here. So how do you do the other two control nets? We got the control net for soft edge and we got the control net for depth map. As we've already downloaded that, we can select it here. We've got the load flux control net nodes here. If you're lost somewhere or want to create a new one, you can type it using, you know, search by keyword and load flux control net. You'll have this exactly the same custom nodes. Once you download the control net, like I just did, you select that control net model. For example, I want to do the depth map. Let's try the depth map in this example. And of course, we have to replace the preprocessors. We're not going to use Candy Edge in this case. We can use any other depth map. Like what I have here. Let's see, I have the depth anything. I have the SWI depth anything. Version 2 as well. Let's try something simple here. Let's try the Midas depth map preprocessor. This is the most common depth map 
preprocessor that we're supposed to have once we download the ControlNet package. The custom nodes package should have this as the basic preprocessor. Once we have that, we change the incoming data of the image data and put that image data output for the apply flux control net custom nodes connecting to the image. If you want the fancy preview here for your interface, then you can connect this one as well for the preview image. So let's try the same image using that map and process the same text prompt. Converting restyling a living room to a cyberpunk living room here. The second time of loading is pretty fast, and as you can see, the depth map, the Midas depth map, is not very clear. I should use the depth anything. If you want more detail from the depth map, go for depth anything. That's a good solution. But this way, we're just giving it a test for the first time. And right now, it's loading in the XLab sampler. And one more thing we have to be aware of. As you can see, the sampler has the control net conditions. This is optional stuff. If you don't have control net, of course, you don't need to connect anything. But if you have the control net loader and apply the flux control net conditions, then you pass the output data of the control net conditions connecting to the sampler control net conditions, and you're good to go. This is the example of the depth map converting this living room as the depth map control net. Restyle this as the cyberpunk style. Actually, I like this one more. Yeah, it's even better than the candy edge, I would say. So let's try to bring this one as the example of, yeah, so looks pretty nice. We can kind of better than version two and version one. Depth map control net from the XLab models, the previous one I've tested, sometimes lost the shape and form of the image that it captured in the control net preprocessors. In the previous models and this model, this version, version three is doing a lot better. It's more stable. So I'm doing these videos for version three, introducing that to you guys because this is more stable right now as far as I can see compared with version one and version two. So yeah, try this version three, it looks a lot better. Let's try the soft edge one. For the soft edge, what you do is once you select this head control net version three, you again use another control net preprocessor, which in our example is the ED soft edge. So the head soft edge lines, this is the new name for this control net of the ComfyUI control net preprocessors package, the latest update versions. So again, connect the incoming image data. We've got to move that from the depth map to the soft edge preprocessor, and we're going to replace the connections of the output for connecting the apply control net nodes and also the preview image. So we can put this aside first, and we're ready to go again for soft edge this time. But I want to change another image so you guys don't get bored with just one image. Okay, so we're going to use this female AI image that I generated previously for Mimic Motion's dancer image. And we can use that and let's play around with that for cyberpunk styles again. But this time we have to change a little bit for the keyword, of course, like a cyberpunk style woman and full HD cinematic in the sky tower. Let's try something not only on the street, you know, try something above the street, which we do, you know, on the sky tower, something like that. So let's see if we can convert this woman standing and it will dress in cyberpunk style and the background as well. But background, we will expect that the woman standing, you know, in the sky tower like on top of the building, something like that. Okay, so we have the image generated, and as you can see, the whole shape and everything are the same using the soft edge control net. And we got this cyberpunk style standing on top of the sky tower. Everything looks like it's following the prompts, and yeah, although it's not a perfect image, we can see so far, the character is following the same as the original image. This is the outline of those edges from the control net, and it can get pretty good on this one. So both soft edge and depth map and candy are able to process using the flux control net custom nodes and the latest V3. And we are able to use the flux one developer FP8. I have used this one in the checkpoint folder as well. So this one is compatible. You can run that in the checkpoint folder. And I have put this in the UNet folder in the control net models folder, the same as the control net where we put the XLab, this is for the control net.
and come back to the models folder when you are using the load diffusion custom nodes and you are going to locate the save tensor files for the flux developer fp8 in here so this is going to be using the load diffusions model that will be looking into your unit folder from what we have in that folder and if you are using the checkpoint models for example you have to load checkpoints and this is typically where we have stored our checkpoint models for stable diffusion 1.5 and sdxl and in here we can also use the flux model as we have talked about previously the fp versions that are released by comfyui.org they have compressed this safe tensor and i don't think i will go for the lower fp4 versions or fn4 versions that one is trimmed down too much and it lost a lot of quality for the generated image results so I won't recommend that one. I prefer using the FP8 or just go full blown on the FP16 which I have in another setup of Comfy UI for the FP16. So that's it for this video. We have three control nets available for the Flux models and it's able to run natively in ComfyUI using the Flux control net custom node. So hope you guys try it out and hope you guys like this Flux models control net. Eventually, I know that they are going to have the IP adapter from the XLab soon as I saw one of the articles that they have talked about IP adapters and it looks like they are going to have that one released soon. So stay tuned. Lots of updates, new stuff coming up for Flux. And of course, this is going to be a lot better image generation in terms of text prompt following and image quality as well. And this is only a base model. It is not any fine-tuned models that you saw in Stable Diffusion 1.5. You have Realistic Vision, Real Dream LCM, Juggernaut, etc. It's not those fine-tuned models. So you have to bear in mind that you know, using a Flux 1 base model to generate quality like this. And if you have a fine tuned model, it's very easy to just beat over the, you know, the stable diffusion 1.5, SDXL, and even SD3. So check it out. I will see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day. See ya.